Hello everybody and welcome to Great Woman History. Today I will be discussing Empress Matilda. Matilda, or Maud as she is sometimes called, was born in 1102. Her father was Henry I of England and her mother was Matilda of Scotland. Matilda had a younger brother named William and numerous illegitimate half-siblings. In 1110, when Matilda was eight, she was sent to the territories of the Holy Roman Empire and betrothed to the Holy Roman Emperor Henry V, who was 24. For four years, Matilda learned German manners, German culture, and German government. Then in 1114, when she was 12, and therefore an adult in the medieval world, Matilda married the 28-year-old emperor. Because of her marriage, Matilda would become Queen of the Romans. Since Henry V was excommunicated by Pope Pas Pascal II, he was formally crowned emperor by a papal envoy, who would later become an anti-pope. The investiture controversy, beyond being difficult to pronounce, was a conflict between the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor that lasted for about 50 years. So there was various Popes and various Holy Roman Emperors who fought over this. It was basically about who could pick and choose to who the bishops were. So who had more authority? The secular powers, such as the Emperor, or the church powers, such as the Pope? So we're good? We can go back to Matilda? Okay, cool. Starting in 1117, Matilda began styling herself Empress of the Holy Roman Empire. A styling which was somewhat controversial since she had never been crowned the Empress. But for the most part, people didn't tend to dispute it. For two years, Matilda served as regent of the Holy Roman Empire while her husband was on campaign. In 1125, Henry V died, and Matilda returned home to Normandy, which was ruled by England at the time. So why was Normandy considered part of England at the time? Well, in 1066, the Duke of Normandy, William, better known as William the Conqueror for reasons that are about to become pretty evident, invaded England and conquered it. <laughs> so since he was the Duke of Normandy and the King of England, they had both Normandy and England. This did lead to some issues with the French monarchy in later generations, since the kings of England were also vassals to the kings of France because of their French territories. But that's really not going to become a relevant issue until we get to the Angevin Empire, which included a, a lot, a lot, a lot of France. Like more France than France had. But anyways, so Matilda went back to Normandy, which was part of England. Matilda's younger brother William had died in 1120 in the white ship sinking. On November 25th, 1120, William boarded the white ship in order to travel across the English Channel back to England. He had previously been in Normandy. It did not go First of all, it seems like everybody was drunk. Second, this ship ran into a rock in the bay, so not really that much into the English Channel at that point. There was some brief hope when he got onto a dinghy. However, he went back to get his half-sister. They climbed into the boat. There were way too many people on the little dinghy, and it sank too. So, um, if you hadn't caught on already, William didn't make it. In fact, only the, there were only like two survivors, so a great many people did not make it. <laughs> Whoops. And after seven years of marriage to his second wife, Henry I had not fathered any more children. As a result, Matilda was considered the heir, and in 1127, Henry gathered the Anglo-Norman barons at Westminster and had them swear to recognize Matilda and her future legitimate heirs. In 1128, Matilda, who was by now in her mid-twenties, married Geoffrey of Anjou, who was a teenager. The marriage had its challenges, in part because Matilda wanted to retain her imperial title, which could be disputed if she were to marry a simple duke. 
Side note, I think Jeffrey of Anjou may have been a count and not a duke, so please do not attack me in the comments if I got that wrong. And in part because Matilda and Jeffrey were not allowed to take possession of the Norman castles that were part of Matilda's dowry. The age difference between the two of them probably didn't help. Despite their difficulties, the couple had three children together. Henry Kirtmantle, who would later become Henry II, Geoffrey Count of Nantes, and William Fitz Empress. In case you guys couldn't tell, Fitz Empress means son of the Empress. Because I guess that's the most important thing William ever achieved in his life. In 1135, Henry I died, and that is where Matilda's story truly begins. Since Henry I did not have any more legitimate sons, he had his barons swear to support Matilda on numerous occasions. However, when he died, his nephew Stephen claimed the throne. The fight between the two would be known as the Anarchy. Stephen was in England and Matilda was in Anjou at the time, which means that Stephen had a bit of an advantage to that. During the Anarchy, Matilda was primarily supported by her uncle, David I of Scotland, and her illegitimate half-brother, Robert Duke of Gloucester, as well as her husband, Geoffrey. Stephen had the support of Louis VI of France and Pope Innocent II. In 1138, Robert Duke of Gloucester rebelled against Stephen on Matilda's behalf, and the war began in earnest. In response to Gloucester's rebellion, Geoffrey reinvaded Normandy, and David reinvaded England. Gloucester and Matilda invaded England in 1140 after being invited by Henry I's second wife, Adeliza, to dock at Arundel. Not that Arundel. That Arundel brother marched northwest while sister stayed in the nearly impregnable castle of Arundel. Stephen besieged Arundel and then agreed to end the siege and release Matilda to Gloucester. There are several theories as to why Stephen chose to release Matilda. Stephen does have a reputation nowadays for having been a chivalrous and generous man. Also, at the time, Gloucester seemed like much more of a threat than Matilda herself. Probably because Gloucester was the one who began the rebellion in the first place and was a son of Henry I. But also, Arundel was seen as a nearly impregnable castle, as stated before, and Stephen probably didn't want to have an extended siege. In 1141, Stephen was captured, and Matilda was in Winchester when she was declared Lady of England and Normandy. But when she arrived in London, she was not welcomed by the people. On June 24th of 1141, she was forced to flee the city, never having actually been crowned queen. It's okay, though, because she's still an empress. Dowager empress. Whatever. Despite the flight from London, nobles were still joining Matilda's faction, in large part because of Geoffrey's successful campaigning in Normandy. In July of 1141, Gloucester was captured, and Matilda released Stephen in exchange for her half-brother. In 1142, Matilda was trapped when Oxford Castle was besieged by Stephen. She escaped with a small force by crossing the freezing river shortly before Christmas. I don't think you guys, like, fully grasp what happened here. So this is Oxford Castle. This is the river that is around Oxford. It's December. She walked through the river in December. That's pretty impressive. So we're, let's, let's just congratulate her on that right now. Everyone, moment of silence to appreciate this. Okay. Now what followed was a multi-year long stalemate. In 1145, many nobles left to join the Second Crusade, which went terribly, terribly wrong. Second Crusade was not the most successful of the Crusades, by the way. Not in the slightest. Anyway. In 1147, Robert Duke of Gloucester died. And in 1151, Geoffrey died. In 1153, a permanent peace arrived when Stephen declared Matilda's son Henry his heir, in exchange for Matilda and Henry recognizing Stephen as king. Stephen conveniently died the following year, and Matilda's son became Henry II. After the war, Matilda served as her son's representative in Normandy. In his early reign, he and Matilda issued charters in both of their names. In 1167, Matilda died at the age of 65. Her wealth was given to the church. Her tomb's epitaph was in Latin, which I am not going to read out loud, but I will read the English translation for you all. Great by birth, greater by marriage, greatest in her offspring, here lies Matilda, the daughter, wife, and mother of Henry. 
You know, at least people in the Middle Ages were perfectly aware of how often they used the same exact names. I kind of appreciate that. So in conclusion, Empress Matilda was a strong woman. She served as regent of the Holy Roman Empire while her husband was away. She styled herself Empress, even though her title could have been disputed at various points in her life. And while she never served as queen in her own right, she persisted in pursuing her claim until her son became king. And that concludes the first episode of Great Woman History. Come back next time to learn about Madame de Pompadour.